subscribe to our youtube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates there is currently an active mission around an asteroid called bennu the mission is called osiris rex and astronomers who've been studying the bennu data from osiris rex have discovered unusual boulders on the surface of this asteroid bennu Upon further investigation they found that these boulders and rocks actually in fact came from a completely different asteroid called Vesta This is not unheard of and it's not shocking but it's still very revealing because the asteroid belt is largely empty Unlike what is shown in Star Wars and other sci-fi movies, if you were to go on an asteroid, it would be very hard to look around and spot another asteroid in the sky. And yet, material from Vesta has landed on Bennu. In this video, we're going to talk about Vesta and Bennu, how they formed, what the significance of finding material from one asteroid on another is, and if we have chunks of Vesta here on Earth. My name is Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. Bennu is what astronomers tend to refer to as a rubble pile of an asteroid. It looks like a clump of rocks stuck together. It was discovered in 1999 and it in fact actually carries a chance of 1 in 2700 of impacting the earth by the year 2200. It is very small. It's only about 500 meters wide and Bennu is named after the mythological Egyptian god of creation and rebirth who takes the form of a bird. Fittingly, the sample return mission that is currently in orbit around Bennu is called Osiris Rex. Osiris is the Egyptian god of the underworld who wears ostrich feathers on his crown and Rex means king in Latin. Osiris Rex itself stands for Origins Spectral Interpretation Resource Identification Security Regolith Explorer. Astronomers love names honoring mythology. Now, Bennu's formation is interesting and we're trying hard to understand how it formed in detail and how it evolved. The asteroid originally came from the breakup of a much larger parent body which we think might have been a planetoid or a protoplanet. Planetoids are basically just asteroids in this context but technically can be anything that is not classified as a planet or a comet. But protoplanets are those where planetary formation began but was interrupted or stopped so they never developed into fully fledged planets. These protoplanets are about the size of our moon or bigger and can even be dwarf planets. In fact, Ceres, which is the only one of five dwarf planets in our solar system that is located in the asteroid belt, is a planetary embryo of a protoplanet. Ceres was also explored by the Dawn mission which we saw in detail in an earlier pure science video. Whereas Vesta itself now is the only surviving rocky protoplanet that formed along with the four big terrestrial or rocky planets. It actually has a differentiated interior which means that there is a core, mantle and a crust. Bennu doesn't have such an interior. It is basically just a rock. but it did break off a protoplanet like Vesta. Bennu's ancestor is thought to have been about 200 kilometers or so in diameter and broke up sometime around 700 million to 2 billion years ago. Bennu is made up of some of the oldest material in the solar system, so the ancestor also formed at around the same time as the rocky planets were forming in the inner solar system. Astronomers studying data from the orbiting Osiris-Rex spacecraft found six boulders ranging in size from about 5 to 14 feet which were much brighter than the rest of Bennu. In fact, many of these boulders appeared extremely bright, almost 10 times as bright as their darker surroundings. Using a spectrometer, astronomers were able to identify the mineral composition of these rocks and they detected a mineral called pyroxene. Pyroxene is found on Vesta. So how did material from Vesta reach Bennu several thousands of kilometers away? To explain this, let's talk a little bit about mountains. What is the tallest mountain in the solar system? 
It's not Mount Everest, the tallest peak on Earth, above sea level, with an elevation of about 8,800 meters or close to say 9 kilometers. It's not Mauna Kea in Hawaii, which is the tallest mountain from base to peak on Earth. It measures 10,200 meters or over 10 kilometers, but most of which is under the sea. If you guessed Olympus Mons on Mars, you're close. Olympus Mons is the tallest volcano in the solar system and measures over 21 kilometers. Mars has a lower gravity, so mountains here grew much taller than they did on Earth. The volcano is dormant now and it held the title of the tallest mountain in the solar system as well until 2011 when we sent the Dawn mission to the asteroid Vesta. Vesta has a very prominent crater on its surface and we think this is an impact crater. When another body slammed into Vesta, it created this huge crater. The name of this crater is Rhea Silvia and in the middle of this crater rises a central peak. This peak is 22 kilometers high, beating Olympus Mons by almost a kilometer. How this peak formed is extremely interesting. Vesta's Rhea Silvia is not any crater. It is the biggest crater in the solar system too, in terms of the size of the crater in proportion to the size of the astronomical body. Vesta is about 570 kilometers across and the Rhea Silvia crater is 505 kilometers across. This is an impact crater and when this impact occurred about a billion years ago, it blasted off several thousands of pieces of rock off the surface of Vesta and partially melted it. The molten material sloshed back into the impact crater and rose up as ejecta and solidified in the cold space, forming the central peak of uplifted material. The peak itself doesn't have its own name, it's just the central peak of the Rhea Silvia crater on Vesta. Meanwhile, all these smithereens of rock that blasted out, called Vestoids, travelled all over the asteroid belt and they have even come as close as to Earth. In fact, Vesta is one of the largest sources of meteorites on Earth. It is not unusual to find one bits of asteroid on another. We have found such transfer of material before. But studying each of these asteroids gives us tremendous insight into how the asteroid belt formed and evolved and how the solar system in turn formed and evolved. More findings about material from Vesta on Bennu will give us more details about the formation of Bennu as well. OSIRIS-REx will attempt the first sampling of Bennu in October and then return the sample to Earth in 2023 for a more detailed analysis.